This farm, Roxburgh Mains, is four miles from Kelso, where we sell our rams at the famous ram sale. It's a low ground farm. We started recording their sheep about 20 years ago with the Suffolks and then followed on with the Texels. Well, an estimated breeding value is, uh, an, just as it says, an estimate of how the animal will breed. The structural correctness of the ram is very important. It's completely separate from the EBVs. People have tried to put numbers on these things, but it really doesn't work. You have to do that visually. This is just an, an overall impression you get. Um, we've got one of the better rams and we've got one of the least good rams. And it's just to show the difference. I mean, they've both been treated exactly the same. They get fed at the same troughs. They're about the same age. But you can see the ram on the right hand side is much heavier, stronger ram altogether than the one on the left. And I've no doubt whatever, when they get to market, there'll be a considerable difference in the, what, the, what the two rams make. If I was looking at these two, even if the far away ram had better EBVs than the near one, I, I wouldn't consider him, but he's, he's not a particularly good ram. When we buy a ram, when we go into the pen at the ram sale, the first thing we do is look inside the animal's mouth. Now this animal's 15 months old, and as you'd expect, he's got two broad teeth up. Now these teeth should meet in the middle of the soft fleshy pad, that's it where my thumb is, um, right in the middle. If it doesn't meet in the middle of the pad, uh, the teeth will be subjected to unusual strains and eventually they'll come out and the animal will probably not live to be six years old, be called at three or four, so much earlier than otherwise would be. After we look at his mouth, the first thing I'll do is put my hand on his back and run it along like that. It should be wide. Now, in a ram, he's going to probably be in bigger condition than lambs that go to uh, the market, but uh, generally you, you won't feel the uh, spinous processes because there'll be a coating of fat on it, but uh, he should be wide over his rib and he should be flat in his shoulder, at least the terminal breed should be, uh, with the hill breeds, they're actually generally sharper in the shoulder. That means that the shoulder comes up like that rather than be absolutely flat. Then. We'll run our hands down his hind quarter and try and estimate how much lean meat there is in there. And then we'll put our hand underneath him and we'll handle his scrotum. Uh, there should be two protuberances like, uh, almost like golf balls on the bottom of the testicles. The testicles must feel soft, but not too soft. And they must be equal in size. By and large, you look at a beast from in front and behind and the legs should drop down like almost like the legs of a table. It isn't quite like that because there are joints and their feet. There's a joint at the bottom for their feet. And what you don't want really is the hock being closer than down at the foot level or converse the other way, but uh, they should have some width between them. Uh, sometimes, um, if they're too close together, it's an indication that the carcass quality isn't particularly good. But saying that, since we started u using New Zealand rams, they are much closer in front because, of course, it makes them easier lambed. So it's not an absolute, but you certainly would hope that they wouldn't be two out of the parallel and uh, the toes on the ram should point straight forward. Now, sometimes they don't and uh, it means that if you keep that ram for a few years or if you keep daughters of them, you're probably going to have to get a knife out or a pair of clippers and clip the hooves because they won't grow in the way they should. They won't be worn down by natural abrasion. The structural correctness of an animal is going to impact on how long he lives and how much work you're probably going to have to do with his offspring if they're actually kept for breeding. The EBVs much more relate to things like weight, carcass composition, and so in a terminal sire particularly you're going to get more money for a lamb of a high EBV sheep than you would of a low at the end of the day.